So what we have here is a DC house, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Excuse the wires, I'm just topping it up charging. Um, at the time I purchased this on Amazon.ca, so Amazon Canada, I paid $269 for it. It was the cheapest 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that you could get. Um, I do believe in the States you can get it for under $200. Don't quote me on that, but I believe I did see other people have purchased them for under that. So what I'm going to do is a capacity test on it. Um, I don't have any of the fancy capacity testers, um, but what I do have is an inverter and I do have these two lights that I can run off it. So then what I will do is I'll take an amperage reading of what's coming out of the battery into the inverter and then run a time, run my time, and then you can calculate the capacity of it based on that. So I will run these lights on it through this inverter. Once it's finished topping up, I am charging it to 14.6 volts before I start this. That should be a full charge on it. And then once I get these lights going, I will come back and show you the readings of it. So we are now fully charged with the battery. Um, it is still, I don't know to focus. It is still reading its surface charge at around 14 volts, but that should drop down to like 13.4 to 13.6. So we are fully charged on the battery. I will get this light on so we can get this light on so we can see. Let's plug that in there. We'll get these lights running. Now it's gonna the fan's gonna turn on, so it's gonna be a little loud. So as we sit now, I'm getting 304 watts is what we're running. And we are pulling 26.8 eight watts, sorry, amps. We are currently at 606. So I will kind of average this out at, you know, 26.8, 26.9 amps. We'll come back and check it multiple times throughout the test. And I will come back and we will get a rough estimate on how many amp hours this should be good for. So at this rate, we should, good, should be good for just shy of four hours, which will give us a full, um, a full run time on this. Now I do know we're not charging at 10 amps like a lot of the proper testers do. Um, I don't have 10 hours either to do this test. So we run this at 26 amps roughly, 26, 27 amps. And um, if we're close enough to the 100 amp hours, I'll call it a success because we're running a lower load, it probably would have made it. So I will let this test run and then I will get back to you guys with the results on the DC house amp hour or DC house 100 amp hour battery. So, as you can see, it is 9.59 and the uh, the battery just died on me, or it didn't, I guess it didn't completely die, but it, um, it just fell short, or the, it fell at the low voltage cutoff for my, um, my inverter here. So it lasted from 6.06 to 9.59. Um, I'm going to do some rough math based on average kind of uh, amperage it was drawing so I can get back to you guys and quickly give you a rough estimate on how many amp hours it lasted. Um, at first glance I believe it reached its 100 amp hour testing but I will quickly do some math and I will get back to you guys on it. So if we run the numbers here if we conservatively estimate that it used 26.6 amp hours which is lower than it started with but by the end of the battery it um it actually got even higher because it was pushing about 30 amps near the end because the voltage was dropping so it was pulling more current so if we go conservative with that so 26.6 which i believe as i said before i believe it was 26.68 it started off at 26.7 so we're going to go conservative with how much it was using if we divide that by 60 that should give us how many amp hours per minute the the lights were drawn so we got that and it lasted 233 minutes so times that by 233 i estimate conservatively that it has 103.29 amp hours in it so that was drawing um again around 26.6 amps so the dc house 100 amp hour battery I'm pretty confident that it actually does have 100 amp hours in it, and that concludes my test for the, um, for the capacity of this battery.